So last time we decided that we need to discuss the wavy nature of uh, electrons. And feel free to stop me or, or uh, bring in some questions if uh, you are planning to, to do them, but just uh, postpone them for, for, for later. So, <clears throat> last time we were discussing uh, what is the wave and uh, those who were in class did provide some uh, reasonable suggestions which can be briefly demonstrated as something is uh, oscillating, right? And we wanted to uh, give more general definition uh, to go away from uh, sinusoidal oscillations. Although sinusoidals are, are good, they, they're good basis, but generally a wave is something that repeats itself in uh, space and time. And uh, we, well, we, which means uh, no one was objecting, which means you, you support it. The um, general definition of a wave as a something that repeats itself in space after some time delay. And uh, the function can uh, relate to different, uh, different physical object. Uh, different chemical object. It can be electro intensity of electric field. It can be uh, height of uh, water under the equilibrium level. It can be string on a, on a musical instrument. Um, and the, oh, it's not in this computer. And you were right showing up, uh, telling about oscillations. This is the uh, most common way to speak about, uh, about waves. And uh, the um, periodically oscillating waves uh, have several common terminology that uh, I'll briefly remind, but probably you, you are aware of them, right? So if uh, we are speaking in, in space, then the uh, distance, what's the distance between peaks? Distance is length, right? And if it is a wave, it is a wavelength, quite natural. Uh, when it changes um, this stuff, how high it is, it is amplitude, and um, the Mathematical way for uh, repeating structures are sines, cosines, trigonometric functions, and uh, the argument goes like uh, in uh, repeating of two pi for the for the full cycle, right? And if you want to, uh, what what are the pi? Uh, what are the name for the units? From point of view of chemists and physicists, they're dimensionless, but mathematically. Again. What is the like if you uh, write sine x? Right. What uh, what are the units for the x? Degrees or radians? Yes, radians. And uh, if uh, our x is uh, not radians, but actual Cartesian space in our universe. Uh, how do we convert from radians to uh, distance units? Uh, when you convert like moles into mass, you use, use some uh, conversion factor, right? So here we also use the conversion factor. So you need to convert distance into radians. And conversion factor is uh, wavelength. So if we are a fraction of a wavelength uh, somewhere in between, we divide the this length over wavelengths, then we get a number from zero to one, multiplied by two pi, and then it will be a trigonometric argument. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, and if uh, our 
x axis is not space but time, then it will be capital T, which is period. Right? So if uh, the clock arrow didn't make the full circle, we just make okay, fifty percent of the of the whole hour will be half an hour or pi instead of two pi. Right? So uh, period. And uh, if we are working on the uh, sinusoidal or sinusoidal wave that repeats itself in, in space and time, uh, we do a traveling wave. We, we are placing this uh, position in space together as arguments in, in, the, in these brackets. And by uh, doing so, we will match the definition of wave with an object which is periodic in space and time, which repeats repeats its shape at some offset after some time delay. Right? So translational uh, symmetry in space and time. Make sense? So um, who did allow me to put minus sign here or would you argue that it should be a plus? What what would it change if I change the sign? Like if the wave is moving, and if I change the sign, what will happen? Does it just like translate where it starts? It will it will start going into different way, right? Oh. So the, uh, the traveling waves uh, can be forward going and backwards going, just depending on the sign between. Uh, Space and time uh, arguments. They can be absolutely the same in the wavelengths, period, and amplitude, but going in the opposite way. Make sense? Good. Can I count on you as? Uh, uh, that you have good memories of uh, of these equations, or should we discuss where they came from? Just just uh, give me a little hint. How uh, uh, is it something that you were happy to do every day in uh, last year of high school, or you see it for the first time, or you saw it so frequent that you started hating it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, these equations are not, are not a surprise for you. Okay, that that the only thing I wanted to hear. So uh, if we look onto the oh, wait a second, let's uh, do a little mathematical experiment, and um, I gave a little disclaimer. At the first meeting that it may look a little boring and too mathematical but we have a good goals in describing natural phenomena we just need to start from simple things and uh, have enough patience to survive through them until it, it will be more more interesting and more realistic so mathematical experiment like natureless wave going forward natureless wave going backwards and they meet each other so uh, if um, uh, I throw one stone in the water, you throw in another one nearby, and two waves will come uh, to meet each other, what will happen? Yeah, it, it will be constructive and destructive interference. You're right. Probably we can learn the language of uh, deaf people and communicate everything. Um, which, which will be extremely good in masks. So um, here, let's consider that we have forward going and backwards going waves with something with one, here is minus, here is a plus, and they have the same um, uh, wavelengths and same period. So let's uh, drill through mathematical exercise to get the answer that you already gave, constructive and destructive inter interference. So, 
there are two cosines. Cosine of A minus B and cosine of A plus B. Uh, assuming that uh, trigonometric identities were not new for you, let's try to convert it. And I suggest it will be very beneficial for analysis if you convert it from sum form into product form. If this one is x, this one is y. This one is x, this one is y. Then uh, we will get uh, two cosine x, cosine y, and uh, under x we, we understood cosine two pi x per lambda times cosine of two pi t over period. Do, uh, do you get anything different? Okay. And uh, we are just starting slowly, but later on it will be more intense. And uh, if you feel boring and uh, that stuff uh, to, to simplify, things will go uh, much more intense. We're just uh, making a slow start. Okay. So, how to interpret the stuff that we, that we see here? So, you, you put the uh, equation with this cosine of uh, spatial part times cosine of the uh, time stuff. So, we can freeze time and look at the spatial thing, the cubic cosine. But if we go a little bit more in time, then everything will be multiplied by, by a factor, right? And, uh, it will be changing its uh, amplitude, sometimes going to positive, sometimes going to negative. But uh, there will be a modulation. So the amplitude will, will go bigger and smaller, but the places that are already big will become bigger. The places that are already small will never become uh, uh, bigger. So if you go to this picture, what and we need to teach Tim. Yeah. My memory is as, as short as for a for cap, like seven mm -hmm. seconds. And Zane. Zane. Okay. Zane was shown uh, these figures constructed and structure. So constructive when it, it goes up and down is down with big amplitude and destructive when it is always zero, independent of time. What is the name for this object when we have this uh, humps and uh, like maximum and minimum lobes and, and nodal points uh, going through time? Just, just for a second. Uh, should I try uh, connecting different cameras or you are doing something different? Um, there is a uh, look here, there is a uh, list of, of cameras. And last time when I, I was, uh, Daniel suggested to select one of these VGAs, it was projecting uh, this class cameras. And uh, now it uh, just projects this, the screen. You said one of the VGAs is the before uh, on, on Wednesday selecting one of the VGAs was giving uh, here the image from the camera now it just gives the blue screen. Uh, and that blue screen is supposed to be that camera there. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, we are having a 30 second break for this uh, technology. Interestingly, it improves image over, so only it's a year to read it. So, uh, constructing destructive interference, and what, what's the name for, for this object uh, when uh, you, you see this uh, loops and nodes? Uh, wave. Huh? Wave. Everything is wave, but uh, more specific. Um, Nowadays, there are two. If, if, if one comes to a um, department store for laundry machine, there are two form factors. One when uh, washer and dryer are on the top of each other, another when they're nearby. So when uh, who has laundry machine that are nearby rather than on top? Did you uh, try to place a mug of beer on, on the working? What do you see on the surface? And, and they are not moving crazily far. They are standing, right? So they're waves and they're standing. What's the name? Standing wave. Yes, correct. So uh, we've um, explored transition from uh, the uh, traveling waves to, uh, to standing waves. And if you go through like period, full period, quarter period, half period, it changes signs, changes the amplitude. And now uh, let me invite you to do a uh, few more mathematical exercises. And I'll, I'll do it the same. So capital F of um, X and T will be our standing wave. Okay like cosine of blah, 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 x, cosine of blah, 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 t. Now, uh, um, here is the plan, what I want to do myself, and I invite you to do, do the same. Uh, practice two derivatives, actually four. Twice, uh, second derivative over position and second derivative over time for this function and see what happens. Uh, why? Why I'm inviting you to do this little exercise? Uh, by doing so, we may come into a discovery, into a, well, it will be not a discovery for the whole humankind, but for our small group. And the discovery will be a mathematical equation that does generate waves, not physically, mechanically, or chemically, mathematically generate waves. So science are just solutions of, uh, of wave equation that we need a mathematical object that will fabricate it for us. And uh, we are exploring some properties and there is a hope that we will see something that looks really symmetric and will prompt us how to form uh, the wave equation. So uh, the part that depends on time uh, stays unchanged and the practice derivative uh, or x over the part that uh, uh, it depends only on, uh, on position. So we'll just consider one big cosine is T capital, another big cosine is uh, X capital. And then uh, we get this T of T unchanged. And the X, we are getting everything except argument uh, to the front. So 2 pi divided by lambda. And then uh, what is the derivative of cosine? Super, yes. Minus sign of, uh, of everything that we had before. 2 pi x over, over lambda. I'm not terribly great in um, 
calligraphy. <laughs> but here, important that, that we do have a minus. And then we, we take a second derivative of all the stuff. We still have the t capital unchanged. We have this minus 2 pi over lambda also un, unchanged. And then we take a derivative of, uh, of sine. When we take derivative of sine, everything except uh, independent variable pops up to the front. And what is the derivative of sine? Just cosine? Just cosine. So um, I'm all, only halfway through, but there is an observation that uh, there is an observation that uh, after the second derivative, we have our function reprodu reproducing itself. So we have T and X capital stuff repeated. So second derivative of a position does not change function. It just accumulates some factor in the front. Minus two pi squared over lambda squared, right? Now I'm going forward uh, and practicing V, practicing V, derivative over time. Now we keep X capital unchanged, dt over T capital. So X unchanged. And then uh, by taking derivative for all this cosine is uh, minus two pi over period times. So minus comes here and here we get sine of two pi period time as an independent right? Okay. And uh, now I would like to practice the uh, second derivative. So it will be x capital unchanged. Then we will have minus, minus one, two pi over t squared. And then derivative of, uh, of sine will be cosine of two pi t over t capital. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having ambiguity for period of, and for this t of t, but um, what do you have? Uh, what is the uh, observation uh, in this in this little mathematical experiment? Oh. We have so many cameras that we can. Uh, I don't know if you if you. Like it, or if you uh, absolutely against, but you can also keep your reactions on uh, anything funny or, <laughs> um, or or maybe not funny. I'm saying then, then yeah, I think they are completely virtual presence. Uh, but if if you do not mind, uh, if, if you don't like, I can turn it around. It's it's not my primary goal. So what do we see uh, by practicing second derivative over space? We reproduce function wave function itself with some factors that depend on the uh, wavelength. By practicing the second derivative over time, we reproduce function itself with uh, accumulating of some factor related to the period. Good. But what is the next step? You can you can guess it. So. Two operations, second derivative over time, second derivative over, over space, reproduce function itself. So if we practice second derivative on one hand, second derivative on another hand, we can put equality sign between them. Right? And if you be 
an equation that uh, will uh, follow from our observations. So any cosine standing wave will match, will be a solution of such equation, such differential equation. Do you have any objections? If you don't, congratulations. You are followers of uh, uh, developers of, of wave equations. You derive wave equations. That helps to reproduce waves in math without getting hands bottom. So uh, we do not, uh, I'll, I'll put details in uh, writing it down, but uh, um, second derivative on left, second derivative on right, both the same between them. And the proportionality coefficient, so uh, second year before the space, second year before the time, and um, 2 pi squared will be cancelled, and we'll have 1 over t pure squared, 1 over, over uh, wavelength squared. And uh, let's get some little notation for convenience and for making a lazy way to, to write less symbols. What would happen if you divide wavelengths over period? If the wave, traveling wave, covers so many miles in so many hours, miles per hour, what is it? Velocity. Yes. Okay. So if we uh, accept this notation, then uh, uh, there will be a proportionality coefficient between these two derivatives, which is a velocity square. So second derivative of the wave function over space equals second derivative of the wave function over time is a uh, conversion factor. Velocity square gives this red box, which is the wave equation. If you know how to solve it, we can generate waves. And uh, they uh, will generate waves uh, of several possible values of uh, wavelengths and, and, and uh, periods. Right? So you will not, we started from one wave, and now it will give any wave. And not necessarily sinusoidal. If you, this equation will give more general, like wave of, of uh, any shape, both traveling and standing. Feel free to stop me and ask questions or express concerns. Not yet? So why, why do we spend time on uh, uh, doing the wave equation? Because electrons, so the atoms and molecules exhibit this wave nature and you cannot understand chemistry without having mathematical tool to describe waves. And uh, if you want to do a little example, a little connection to real life, we need to travel at least 40, 50 years backwards in time when uh, TV sets and displays were not flat. Uh, have you operated non flat TV? So, describing what it is, how, how does it look like, and, and what, what, it, what, what do you think is inside, and why it is not, not flat? So, flat is, is clear, it's like a, a lot of microscopical, microscopical uh, light emitting diodes that have some wiring and they just shine light when and can create an image, right? And it is natural. But why ancient TVs were uh, like it is a big box and if you break it, if you just throw it uh, from 10th floor from people who are walking below, it, the casing you break and when you see that there is a glass tube. The vacuum tube? Yes, vacuum tube. So why vacuum tube shines, uh, gives us light on, on, a, on a front screen? 
shoots electrons at it. Huh? Shoots electrons at it. Sure. And where are electrons are coming from? Um, in hunting or in uh, military action, where are bullets are coming from? Guns. Where are electrons are coming from? Guns. Electronic guns. <laughs> Everything is very natural, right? So uh, just a, a device that gener uh, generates electrons with high speed. And you already mentioned that it is not just a tube, it is vacuum tube. So in vacuum, electrons feel relaxed and can move freely. So electrons from the gun hit the screen. Why the screen flashes? We don't know if it must flash when it when it is being hit by electron. Maybe it's uh, it's a chemical substance that uh, accepts energy of uh, electron, gets excited and and, and then re recombines and gives light, like scintillating uh, material. But uh, when electrons are approaching this uh, little area of space on the screen, it gives light, and we can. Uh, with these vacuum tubes, one can observe uh, approaching of a single electron to, to the surface, approaching this uh, little area of space on the screen, it gives light. And we can, uh, with these vacuum tubes, one can observe uh, approaching of a single electron to, to the surface of, of, of the screen. So, Suppose we travel even more years backwards, and it is not a TV screen, it's just a vacuum tube with electronic gun, with just negative and positive uh, bias with high voltage, with several kilo electron volts, and then it accelerates, and then it picks up so much velocity that it goes further. And then we, we, before the screen that will flash, when electron is coming, uh, let's make a a little experiment in our brains, but it is possible it was done in, in the reality. We put a little barrier, a screen, a screen that is not transparent for electrons. So if we put one hole, then electrons will come through and uh, flash light on a, on a this scintillating surface, right? When they close this one, electrons come here, they will flash lights here. So if you will be like on a screen, there will be either one or one second spot. What will happen if we open both uh, slits, both holes? Flash everywhere. <laughs> you are uh, feeling the sense of uh, trip. Not everywhere, but not only in this place, somewhere else. The middle. Exactly, exactly. And it is a demonstration of the way the nature of, of the electron. So uh, um, this experiment, if you believe it, is one of the reasons to explore, to solve wavy wave equations. So it will be uh, constructive and destructive inter interference of electronic waves. Destructive, constructive, constructive, constructive. And uh, we are approaching to the last minute. A description how you interpret them. And This is more food for thought. And uh, we are uh, making transition from electrons that moving on a straight line in a flat screen TV, in a vacuum tube, to electrons that are moving around the positive nuclei in the atom. And we slowly start to believe or accept that they have wavy nature, they can practice constructive and destructive interference. And then the electrons can. Uh, if they practice interference, they can form standing waves. 
And if the L transforms standing waves, it will be stable configuration that will uh, live for a longer time. And whether it is standing or not standing will depend on its uh, like wavelengths and, and period. So there are only specific wavelengths and periods that will give a uh, pleasant, nice looking structure, standing wave. So this green line is uh, amplitude of electrons along the circumference if we accept that it moves on the projection. If you take something this uh, odd numbers of this uh, wavelengths and period, it will move ugly and it will not wait for. It will be like a mutant element. Enough. I think uh, if some of you need to uh, go to another class in uh, five, 10 minutes, let's finish for now. I'll stay here and answer any questions uh, in person or online, but have a nice weekend. Looking forward to see you on Monday. No, no homeworks, just accumulate energy for the future. Thank you. My question. Honor August. And Adam, if you have any questions, you can either type or unmute microphone and ask. Uh, or there is a way to raise hand in the, in uh, in Zoom. It should be. If you do not have questions, I'm going to disconnect in uh, uh, a few seconds. Uh, say, I do have a question. Is it possible for uh, classmates to actually hear us while we are uh, talking on call? Oh, um, I was asking if uh, classmates could hear us while we were talking on call. Uh, I didn't quite recognize. Maybe, maybe if you do you have camera enabled. Uh, Uh, okay, how about now? I still, I still don't see your, your image, but let's just try. I will try to, to concentrate and analyze what you're telling. Some some word is uh, that I'm, I'm I'm not understanding. Uh, just only repeat the question once again. Okay. Um, I was curious if classmates would be able to hear us while we were talking on the call. So, like, if we needed to ask a question. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so I, I I do not know if there is a private uh, chat line. Uh, maybe, maybe only in text, but if uh, you just speak out loud to everyone, I think it will be, it will be fine. Okay. Gotcha. Sounds good. I just wanted yeah, to and check. I, I, I totally encourage uh, you to interrupt me and start discussing. It will be much more vivid if, uh, if I see the interest and recognize uh, uh, that I need to either slow down or speed up. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I'll try and be in class in the next couple of days. It's just kind of tough because I have a class directly at a, you know, uh, 10 to 10.50, which <laughs> is quite a bit farther away. And also, I mean, if I tried to do it from my apartment and stuff, I would have to skate for at least like 10, 15 minutes to get there. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try, but uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, uh, please do whatever is comfortable for you. Uh, use, as, as, as we go through semester, I think I will master skills to use the classroom and it will be very close to natural uh, presence. Understood, okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Adam and Connor, if you have some questions, please, uh, Contribute them now. I'll, I'll wait a little, but uh, I'm, I intend to disconnect. Okay, 
I assume there are no more questions. So uh, announcing the meeting uh, concluded. Uh, have a nice weekend and, and see you on Monday, either, either virtually or, or in person. Thank you.